Hey there, Horse Center fans. Matt and I are back with another exciting show on Horse Center this week, Matt. We are taking our first look at the 2020 Kentucky Derby. 2020. Wow. What a year. Hey, I'm ready, Brian. I think we got a pretty good list of horses. Well, we got we got about a dozen or so of our favorites. We're going to run them down right now on Horse Center. Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the outstanding pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shippen. How are you today, Matt? I am very good, Brian. It's time for us to look at the 2020 Kentucky Derby for the first time. But it's only November, Matt. It's only November. We have... We have five and a half months. Surely people don't want to start talking in Kentucky. What's that they do? All right. We'll talk Kentucky Derby. Hey, you know, Matt, and in this age of uh, sports books, Las Vegas, and even the future wager through uh, Churchill Downs, uh, it, it, it makes sense. Uh, yours truly actually hit a uh, future wager for a nice horse last year in the Kentucky Derby. So it makes sense to uh, maybe put a few dollars down early. And that's what Matt and I are talking about. Twelve horses, a dozen, Matt, an even dozen of horses that are currently our favorites for the 2020 Kentucky Derby. Let's not waste any more time, Matt. Let's start the list. And we're going to start a list with a horse that went out to Santa Anita to run in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, Matt, but he didn't run. Yeah, Maxfield for trainer Brandon Walsh, a son of Street Sense, won his maiden special weight at Churchill Downs. That's one of the things I like to look at, Brian, uh, early on with these horses. We, we know one important thing already. He likes the racetrack. Yeah, his, uh, his debut performance came at Churchill Downs, Matt, but it wasn't that performance that uh, kind of woke up the world to the talent of Maxfield. It, as you mentioned, a son of the 2006 Breeders' Cup Juvenile winner, rousing Breeders' Cup Juvenile winner, and the return next spring to, to win the 2007 Kentucky Derby winner street sense. So this horse is uh, is bred to be a horse that can go the distance, Matt. He's, uh, he's owned by Go Dolphin. You mentioned Brendan Walsh already. It was his second race, Matt, and we're going we're gonna to look at that race. It was the grade one, went straight for that maiden win at Churchill Downs to a grade one race at Keeneland, and he circled the field. He won for fun, Matt. He just blew him away in the stretch, including uh, a horse who easily could have made our list, Gouverneur Morris, that day. And I believe Gouverneur Morris was actually the favorite, but Maxfield blew him away in the stretch so impressively. I know a lot of people, especially after the running of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Map, thought Maxfield would have dominated the race if he didn't have a small hoof issue. Uh, they did the right thing. Of course, they scratched him. Uh, he's not going to race the rest of the year. He's going to get a short break. But, yeah, he's got a win over Churchill. Uh, he can rally. He can obviously get a distance. And that race at Keeneland looks so good. Only two starts in, Matt. But that's kind of the trend now to uh, to have these horses pretty lightly race. Maxfield, no knock in Maxfield yet. Yeah, absolutely. And you're right, Brian. Uh, all of the horses on this list are lightly raced compared to even just, you know, even just four or five years ago, uh, uh, the number of starts that they're making is uh, is less and less and, and seems to have the running style that fits really well for the Derby. Absolutely. Street Sense. Street Sense, of course, missed out in the Breeders' Cup Classic because of Sire when McKinsey. Uh, was beaten by Vino Rosso in that Curlin and Street Sense rivalry. But uh, Street Sense may get the last laugh in next year's Kentucky Derby. Matt and I both think Maxfield is certainly one of the top horses to look out for, Matt. But he's not probably going to be the absolute winner book favorite. I think the winner book favorite, now it depends on what happens next for Tiz the Law, a uh, uh, New York bred son of Constitution, Matt. He's also two for two. But he's going to run again this year. He's going to run in the Kentucky Jockey Club. They uh, they did they decided not to push him out and uh, send him to California for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. They're waiting for the Kentucky Jockey Club. And what does that give him, Matt? It gives him a race over the Churchill Downs racing strip. Yeah, and I think that's certainly one of the things that they were looking to try and get. After I was there for uh, his victory in the Champagne, which came over uh, uh, Green Light Go, who a highly heralded horse. Also, we'll talk a little bit more about him 
uh, on our list going down there. Uh, so many cool things about Tis the Law uh, winning the champagne. Got to remember, uh, from the connections of a uh, fan favorite Funny Side, that's trainer Barkley Tag, that's Sakatoga Stable. Uh, in there all those neat things that happened with funny side came flashing back with tis the laws very impressive victory in the champagne right after the race he said no 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 we are not going to the breeders cup we're not traveling across the country we didn't do it with funny side we're not doing it with tis the law we're going to go to kentucky yeah barkley tag is a uh, veteran of this game matt and he's not uh one to get overly excited too soon. So you know Tis the Law is going to be handled judiciously and wisely. It is interesting to see those Sakatoba, Sakatoga uh, uh, silks on another Kentucky uh, Derby content. Remember Funny Side more than a decade and a half ago, Matt Tom Flies. Funny Side, of course, won the Derby in the Preakness before Empire Maker beat him when he, uh, he faded to third in the Belmont. But a great triple crown for Funny Side. Tis the law, uh, New York bred Senate Constitution. It hasn't been a lot of New York breads to do well uh, in, in the spring classics, uh, save for funny side. Uh, and uh, Constitution is a new sire to us, but Constitution is quickly becoming a major sire, Matt. I, I think we have two Constitutions on our list right now, and we probably could have added, easily added one or two more. So certainly uh the hottest uh, freshman sire out there and tis the law looked the part not only in winning a very uh, highly rated uh made in special weighted saratoga but then as you mentioned in the champagne really looked good there as he accelerated away from the field down the belmont park stretch we're not forgetting that we're not forgetting our breeders cup juvenile pick uh the third horse on our list folks is dennis's moment and, and matt and i both thought he would win the breeders cup juvenile he didn't he ran last uh either matt and i are completely all wet as i guess a lot of people were because he was the favorite in the breeders cup juvenile or he lost every chance when he stumbled badly went down to his knees out of the starting gate from the rail position and then never really looked too interested in running after that yeah brian this is this is a horse with uh four starts in his career but it's a it's a tale of Two races and two races where uh, his two victories were super impressive. We, we've talked about it before, that 19-length speedy maiden victory. And then the the off-the-pace rallying victory in the Iroquois uh, at Churchill Downs, that factor that we talked about before. But the other two races, in my eyes, Brian, are just complete throwouts. Uh, there was the maiden race where uh, he lost his jockey trying to avoid uh, uh, a trouble ahead. And, and then at the Breeders' Cup, I uh, stumbled to his knees. Uh, um, I think it's very simple to say those, those two losses were just complete throwouts. So uh, uh, Dennis's moment, I, I'm not down on him after what happened in there. And interestingly, you mentioned the future wagers, Brian, uh, um, after... The Breeders' Cup, his odds jumped from 10 to 1 up to 25 to 1. At 10 to 1, I'm not interested in any horse in the future wagers, Brian. There's just too much that can happen in, uh, in six months. But 25 to 1, that piques my interest a little bit. Well, I like when your interest is peaked, Matt Schiffman. And yeah, I, I agree with you. It, it, he becomes a playable commodity because... He scorched the earth at Ellis Park. He, uh, he he really made the Iroquois look impressive, being able to rage just a little bit off the pace, take over to the race when he wanted to. And then he was geared down inside the 16th pole in that Iroquois win. Dennis's moment is a really good horse. You have to wonder if he's trouble prone. Fair enough. I mean, you there's, there's, a, there's a line that needs to be drawn through two of his four races, half of his four races. Uh, this is not a horse who's problematic in the mornings. This is not a uh, head case. This is not a horse who is uh, has got some physical things going on. They said after the race he, he was a little shoulder sore, uh, but that's to be understood when you look at the uh, few jumps out of the starting gate in the Breeders' Cup. Doodle. Dennis's moment, I I'm with you. There there's no way I'm giving up on him after the Breeders' Cup, too. And all, uh, 
I saw some people, well, he didn't really do anything after he stumbled out of the gate. I've seen plenty of horses run well after they stumbled out of the gate. This was a bad stumble, and uh, he never, never was able to pick it up after that. I, fair enough. Draw a line through it. Still one of the most impressive two-year-olds of the year. Son of Tiz now trained by Dale Romans. He'll be at Churchill Downs uh, for much of his racing career. He's bred for a mile and a quarter. Tiz now, of course, won the Breeders' Cup Classic twice. Uh, and you mentioned the Iroquois was over the track already. So there's still a ton to love about Dennis's moment. We're not forgetting about him here on Horse Center, Matt. All right, the next horse on our list, Matt, is uh, another horse that ran in that much maligned Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Let's talk about the Breeders' Cup Juvenile for a minute, Matt, because the top three horses, I believe the lowest odds on the trio was 28 to 1. Therefore, that race is a stinker, and should we, we should pretty much discount the whole field. I'm not completely buying that. I'm not saying that the same results would happen in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile if they ran it again in a couple of weeks. <laughs> I think there are some good horses in there. Next on our list is a no Dior. Yeah, Brian, and, and we also mentioned the fact that Maxfield wasn't in the race, which is something that people are pointing to. Dennis's moment uh, uh, didn't really uh, get a chance to show his best in there. Uh, you know, everything you mentioned is valid, Brian, and, and you have to also think about the fact that the, uh, the Breeders' Cup juvenile winner has rarely will come back and won the Kentucky Derby. A number of them are do come and and be and end up being part of the Kentucky Derby field, but you know, for a juvenile winner to come back and win the Kentucky Derby has been very rare. And, and with that in mind, I, I am a little dubious about uh, certainly the winner and and, and made uh, in here in this year's uh, juvenile coming back to be a Kentucky Derby winner. Okay, fair enough. But let's talk a little bit about Ano Dior. Ano Dior uh, was a horse that I actually mentioned on a Breeders' Cup preview show here because I liked what I saw at Golden Gate Fields. This was a pretty uh, ritzy buy for, for uh, 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 Bay uh, Area Connections. And uh, Blaine Wright, uh, who, who trained a, a nice three-year-old this year, another twist of fate, they put down quite a bit of money to get a no Dior and, and they uh, sent him out to a maiden race at Golden Gate. That's where Blaine Wright is, uh, has his stable. And a no Dior was so impressive in that maiden race that I thought he had a shot in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf uh, coming off of the uh, synthetic surface at Golden Gate Fields. He didn't get into the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf, which was his first choice. So instead, they went with Plan B, which was the Breeders' Cup Juvenile of all places. Uh, and the biggest two-year-old race of the year, and uh, he made a wide run. Second race, first race on dirt, mile on 16th now on a new track, new surface, second race of his life, I'll say it again. He made a wide run and just missed winning there when, when the horse on the lead never uh, never really got tired and, and held him off, but uh, really impressed with his two races. He's a son of Medagliadoro out of a top at Merrim. That, that what's not to like. Yeah, and, and you said a price tag. It was $400,000 that they plunked down on this horse. So they certainly had to see some things that they liked in there. Uh, pedigree says they can get the distance uh, um, out west right now, you know, not looking like uh, some of the past years when there's big standouts from the Baffert barn. So it looks like there's going to be plenty of opportunity uh, out there for uh, an outdoor to pick up some derby points. Yeah, and, and you mentioned uh, the lack of uh, Bob Baffert superstars yet, and, and, I, and I think that's a function of justify a little bit, Matt, in that uh, you know, wh wh why do they need to race that much if, if they can do it uh, starting their three-year-old season, debuting at, at, at three? So there are plenty of highly regarded Bafferts who either have had one race or zero races. We included zero of them on this list uh, <laughs> because none of them were Kentucky Derby favorites of Matt and I yet. But uh, I certainly expect that to change over the coming months. Baffert's still loaded. And uh, he's got a lot of high-priced, good-looking young horses in there. Just none that made the list today. All right, Matt. While all eyes were on the Breeders' Cup, back your way, back your neck of the woods, 
at Aqueduct at the Big A. They ran the Nashua. I believe it was the day after uh, the Breeders' Cup Classic. And uh, a horse from Parks, uh, a horse trained by Michael Trombetta, was let go at 9-1 to one off, a, off a maiden win at Parks that, that didn't look spectacular by any means. But what Independence Hall did in the Nashua looked pretty spectacular. Yeah, that's for sure. And this is another one of those sons of Constitution. Get it, Brian? Constitution, Independence Hall, that whole, you know, U.S. history thing uh, going on there with the name. Yeah, Michael Trombetta. So keep in mind that Independence Hall is not based at Parks. He is based at Fair Hills Training Center for uh, Trombetta. And uh, I heard him talking about uh, this horse the other day. And they debuted at parks just as a matter of circumstance. Some other races they were looking at uh, uh, didn't fill, and a race got canceled. They were going to go to Laurel, and they had to cancel races down there for some wacky reason uh, on, on one day. And they got that maiden win uh, at parks. This horse was a $100,000 yearling purchase, and then was a $200,000 two-year-old purchase. But wow. Uh, uh, when uh, Independence Hall got on that aqueduct racetrack, uh, unleashed a tremendous performance, a three-digit buyer speed figure 101, which is very rare uh, for two-year-olds at this time of year. Yeah, it was a big performance. He, uh, he stayed close to the pace, and then he just took over at will, and he opened up lengths at will in a very good time there in the Nashua Stakes at Aqueduct, his second career start for him. So he's two for two. As as I mentioned, uh, a lot of horses here, especially early on this list, with only two career starts. Independence Hall, we might see him next at the same track in the Remsen. That would make sense, considering the Nashua uh, is kind of the prep for the Remsen. So we, we look forward to that. And, and the horse before that we just talked about, a no uh very well may go in the Los Alfuturity. So a couple of horses there joining Tis the Law as horses who will still be running before 2019 is over. I don't expect we'll see the next horse on our list again in 2019. That's Green Light Go, one of the most impressive looking physically horses on the list for me, son of hard spun trained by Jimmy Jerkins, Matt. Yes, Brian, Astronic Stable uh, uh, homebred, as you said, a son of uh, hard spun came out of the came out onto the track running won the saratoga special at uh saratoga and then they took a little time off and brought the horse back to run in the champagne where uh, i think it was expected that green light go would be the, the favorite in there but tis the law who we talked about a good bit took a lot of action uh, in that race and ended up beating green light go in there um, again I, I, i'm not the, that race uh and finishing second does not mu diminish my view of green light go as a horse that i expect to see come back uh probably in florida i would assume and, and uh with some maturity under uh is certainly high on my list yeah, he's high on my list, Matt, too. And I, I'm with you. I don't think this champagne is a deal breaker for me with Green Light Go. Uh, impressive maiden winner at Belmont Park. Impressive Saratoga special winner at the spa. Uh, and then he was going to run in the hopeful, and, and, and the hopeful come, came up very sloppy. So he scratched out of that. I, I wonder if, if they almost had a little bit too much speed in him because in the champagne, really, he was uh, uh, fighting for lack of a better word, he was going at it on a fast pace. And uh, I actually thought he did well, and he was a game uh, brave performer to finish second there on the rail as, as horses were, were with him the whole way, and then there was some rate, late rallying going on. So uh, don't uh, don't look at that well-beaten second behind Tis the Law too harshly, folks. Uh, I, I think Pace made the race for Green Light go. He's bred to get a distance. And I think he just needs to relax a little bit. Jimmy Jerkins, yeah, usually winters in Florida, so we'll expect to see green light go. An impressive son of hard spun down there. Uh, speaking of the hopeful map, the next horse on our list is Basin. Another freshman sire, Liam's map, has made some noise this year. Basin is ha had three races. We haven't seen him for a while, but uh, he ran against pretty good horses in all three of them, finishing uh, second in a maiden race, then winning a maiden race, both in New York, before that hopeful 
uh, slop uh, favored win. I don't know. He came rolling, uh, rallying and rolling down the lane and won for fun in the hopeful. Uh, looks like Steve Asmussen has a good one in Basin. Yeah, one by six in there, and and Asmussen had a barn full of promising uh, uh, two year olds to to race up at Saratoga and around the country. And as you said, uh, 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 freshman sire Liam's map, who we remember winning the the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile at the end of his career for Todd Plesher. This one was a hundred and fifty thousand dollar purchase in there. Uh, um, Asmussen has. Uh, 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 giving it to him some time off to mature now. And with that Hall of Fame tra trainer, who knows where we'll end up seeing this one uh, make his debut as a three-year-old because Asmussen, Asmussen runs them all over the country. Yeah, and Basin, uh, wherever it happens, hopefully Basin will be uh, uh, completely healthy and will start the uh, Kentucky Derby prep season early enough because... Uh, when and uh, if he comes back early in next season, I think he'll be a real horse to watch uh, on the Kentucky Derby Trail. The next horse on the list, Matt, uh, is a horse I kind of insisted that we include. And, of course, you didn't want to disagree with me at all. He's really well-bred. He's a son of honor code out of a grade, graded stakes winning mare out there in California Hollywood Stories. Trained by John Sheriffs. He's only had two maiden races, but uh, I liked what I saw in those two maiden races from Honor AP out in California. Yeah, Brian, and this one uh, has been well regarded since uh, he went into the sales ring as a yearling and brought an eight hundred and fifty thousand uh, uh, dollar purchase price. And and it's not surprising, you know, John Sheriff's takes is known for taking his time with horses so uh you know not surprising that the, that uh he didn't win his first out but then came back uh to take his main special weight at santa anita by five lengths in there and was heavily bet while doing it yeah and, and that main race of course is is the the race i kind of discovered on our ap and just to say discovered i, I mean personally discovered because he, he's no secret but uh, he really got left behind early on. It was a big field. He was dead last in this large maiden field in his debut performance. And then he made up gobs of ground to uh, to rally for second that day. And he, as you said, he a nice, simple return win. He was heavily favored and he won easy. Uh, we look for him to uh, probably uh, uh, get in a uh, Kentucky Derby prep start either later this year or early next year. But Honor AP, I think with that breeding, and uh, in the hands of sheriffs, uh, who of course also trained Giacomo to upset the Kentucky Derby years ago, uh, a very interesting horse who hasn't yet made a stakes appearance. Another horse who hasn't yet made a stakes appearance map, but also an impressive rallier. We we tend to gravitate towards ralliers a little bit. You and I, I think, Matt, uh, maybe maybe perhaps showing our age. But anyway, uh, three technique, uh, son of Mr. Speaker, has looked good in New York. Yes, and trained by uh, Jeremiah Inglehart, who has really become a prominent trainer of two-year-olds uh, in New York, really has taken over that banner a little bit that uh, Todd Pletcher has, uh, you know, maybe willingly given up a little bit. He's not quite as as fast to get his uh, horses to the track and into the winner's circle as he once was. But uh, uh, three technique is... Uh, a horse that was went through the sales ring as a weanling and brought fifty thousand, but then uh, next year as a yearling jumped up to one hundred and eighty thousand dollars, where uh, he was purchased by the coach, not Dwayne Lucas, the coach Bill Parcells. Yeah, interesting, Matt. And three technique is a uh, is a football. Uh uh, terminology there. So that's how he got his name. Mr. Speaker, a young sire, of course, who uh, was a winner in two turns on the grass. Three technique. I like him because he ran against good horses in all three of his starts, even though he didn't make a stakes appearance. Uh, he, he was actually second, a good second to Basin before Basin went on to win the hopeful. And then if you saw three techniques maiden win, where he just rolled outside of horses and, and flew on by at seven furlongs there in that maiden win, you had to put three technique on the horse to watch list. Unfortunately, he didn't make another start this year, 
Uh, but uh, when he does come back for trainer Jeremiah Engelhardt, three technique look like the kind of horse that we want to uh, take a close look at in the future. All right, Matt, we've we've been through nine horses and we've still yet to talk about a Breeders' Cup winner. Can we talk about a Breeders' Cup winner, Matt Chip? Please, can we? Yeah, let's certainly do that. We got a couple left uh, on the list, but let's go to Struct or let's go to a Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf winner. Three for three in his uh, career currently. One all three. Four, of course, in New York. Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. Yes, of course, Brian, for Chad Brown. And uh, this is a horse who. Uh, what went for 160,000 as a yearling, but then back in the ring as a two year old, $850,000. So, uh, quite a jump, uh, and, and must have been a sight in the, in the sales ring there. And not too long after winning the Breeders' Cup, uh, juvenile turf, Chad and the connection said, We're gonna, we're gonna take a shot with this son of Palace Malice on the dirt. Yeah, Matt, a few things there. Uh, first off, it strikes me that we have a real trend here of uh, first crop sires on our list. Now, of course, we saw horses like Street Sense and Hard Spawn and, and, and Tis Now on the list, but there's a lot of, uh, almost an inordinate amount of uh, first crop sires on this list. That, that's uh, that's uh, interesting to me. Maybe, uh, maybe these freshman sires of 2019 are going to be the real deal, but Structor has always been well liked, um, and it, 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 he was he was our top pick in the Breeders' Cup uh, Juvenile Turf. He didn't win any of his races uh, in overwhelming fashion in, in kind of newspaper of record style from a year ago. Structor did it more workmanlike, but in each race he was best. And the young son of Palace Malice, you would figure, could handle dirt. And uh, you said it didn't take long. It didn't take long at all, Matt, because he was talking about it immediately after the race, where this is a Kentucky Derby horse. We've seen uh, horses uh, recently, uh, Mendelssohn and, uh, and War of Will, uh, run in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf and go to the Spring Classics. Structure certainly looks like a horse of quality in the finest hands you can have. Uh, uh, there for Chad Brown, and uh, we, we wait for his dirt debut, but obviously he's a horse to look out for as we move closer to the Kentucky Derby. All right, Matt, I, you threw me off there. I thought we were talking about Breeders' Cup winners. I thought we were going to go into the juvenile. You, you, you bring a turf horse at me. How about Storm the Court, Matt? You saw Brittany Erton interview her dad, Peter Erton, after they won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, after Peter Erton won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, and Brittany Erton, of course, the uh, uh, the announcer there for NBC Sports. What a cool moment. Storm the Court, the son of Court Vision, long shot winner, but he's a horse that has to be on the list after that win. Yeah, that's for sure. You can't not put the, the, Bre the Breeders' Cup Juvenile winner on there. Uh, and, uh, you know, the horse got a good, uh, decent enough uh, speed figure in there. Uh, coming out of the race, uh, Peter Erton. It was it was one of the great feel good uh, uh, stories in there. This is a horse, you know. Hey, was a debut winner, um, so this is not a horse that uh, didn't you know hasn't done good things out out there. Uh, lost his rider in the in the Del Mar Futurity and the mess that happened at the beginning of that race was only a sixty thousand dollar purchase. But like like you said, Brian, feel good story in here. I think I mentioned earlier in the show, you know, the history of uh, Breeders' Cup Juvenile winners and the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, it's it's not a great history, but uh, Storm the Court, certainly one of the top horses, two-year-olds of 2019 off that Breeders' Cup win, Matt. Uh, his record looks a little bit like Dennis's moment where he's won two out of four and he, uh, and, and he dropped the rider in one of those four races. Uh, Storm the Court did win first time out in California. Uh, he was third in the American Pharaoh behind eight rings and uh, kind of turned the tables completely on that one. Uh, this time uh, he was ahead of uh, eight rings earlier and eight rings had no answer for him as he asked him on the turn at the head of the stretch. So we included Storm the Court on this list. We didn't include eight rings. We weren't big fans of eight rings going into the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. We don't have them on this list. A lot of people will say, where the heck is eight rings on this list? But Storm the Court was not as good as him in the American Pharaoh, but it was certainly better than him 
in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. And he was certainly a brave horse because there were horses coming to him in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. And he was resolute on the lead. He was still running. They ran a lot faster than the Juvenile Phillies. Uh, Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies was won the same day, a few races apart. So uh, storm the court, court vision. There's breeding to think that he can go a distance. Uh, let's see if this story, this uh, nice story that we saw with Brittany and Peter Erden goes a little bit further than just the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Matt, that's 11. I think we said we were going to do a lot. No, no, you said we were going to do a dozen, Matt. How about an undefeated horse? We haven't talked about a whole lot of undefeated horses on this list, maybe a few. Uh, I know Structor was three for three. South Bend is three for three, Matt, and any fan of Notre Dame, as I think that you might be, wants to talk a little bit about South Bend. <laughs> hey, Brian, you know, just with that name, you know you're going to lose an awful lot of value, whether you're looking at the future book or or in next races, because those Notre Dame fans are all over the country, and they are rabid. Anyway, three for three, Sagamore Farms, Stanley Huff, another one of those young, promising, up up-and-coming sires in algorithms. Uh, um, not a, didn't spend a lot of money. This one was forty seven thousand as a yearling, and then Sagamore grabbed him for seventy thousand as a two year old. Got one of those big check marks. Check though, Brian Zipsy. That's a win over the Churchill Downs track in the street sense. Hey Matt, I think he actually has a double check mark next to his name because he's got. Uh, He's got two wins at Churchill Downs. He just got up in the final stride to win his debut, which is at Churchill Downs. Then he went down to Keeneland and an extended uh, stretch drive, wore, finally wore down the leader to get to two for two in an allowance race at Keeneland. And then uh, and then he was behind horses in the street sense, had to wait and, and, and kind of wait and find his way through horses, made a move. He's not won these races by open lengths. He's not won them in eye-catching, popping fashion where you say, oh, my gosh, look at him. But what he's done is he's won. He's won three for three, and he's proved to be a uh, game horse, the son of algorithms. Like you said, he wasn't uh, purchased for a lot of money. And like I said, he hasn't been winning his races in, in breathtaking style. Maybe maybe this is a story of, uh, I don't know, Matt, maybe this is a, a new version of Rudy, if you will. <laughs> South Bend, three for three, the street sense winner. I don't think we're going to see him in the Kentucky Jockey Club, Sagamore Farm, as you mentioned, Stanley Hoff. Uh, but uh, I think a horse with those credentials had to make our list. And, and like I said, I like the, uh, the hood spot he showed to win all three of those races uh, when he easily could have lost them. Matt, there's no one trained by Todd Pletcher on this list. There's no one trained by Bob Baffert on this list. Do we need our head examined for coming up with our 12 favorite Kentucky Derby horses as of the middle of November and not having a Pletcher and a Baffert horse on the list? I don't know, Brian. There are probably some people that feel that way anyway in general about us. But uh, no, you know, Brian, I think it's probably like what you mentioned. I think at this point, Baffert is quite happy to sit back and say, hey, I got some good ones in the barn. I'll be out there. And I think Todd has begun to do the same thing where he's being more patient, uh, bringing his out. So uh, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll hear more from Mr. Pletcher also. Mr. Pletcher, Mr. Baffert, no, uh, no ill intentions intended by not including you on this early look, our first look at the Kentucky Derby 2020 here on Horse Center. Remember, there's lots of ways you can bet these horses soon, uh, early for the Kentucky Derby. So hopefully this list uh, makes you uh, understand the horses a little bit better that uh, you might be looking at on that future wager. And uh, Matt and I sure enjoyed putting it together for you as we are what, Matt, five and a half months away or so from the first Saturday in May. Hey Matt, can I get a parting shot from you as we close the door on this edition of Horse Center? Absolutely. I think, and I think Brian, the first official Kentucky Derby future pool uh, from Churchill Downs, I think is coming up at the end of the month. Uh, Thanksgiving weekend, uh, I think, is when the first pool is. And it'll be interesting to see, Brian, how many of our 12 horses make that uh, list of 24 when that comes out. And as always, 
I want to thank our producer, Brett Workman, for putting together the show. Thanks to Brett. Thanks for everybody for watching our Kentucky Derby First Look show. And, and Matt, if if we have no uh, say in who they put on that list of 20, I guess it would be 23 in the field. Uh, but if they're smart, they'll have all 12 of our Horse Center First Look horses on their list. Anyway, folks, we appreciate you watching. Remember that uh, we are sponsored by the best contest site out there. That's Derby Wars. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here on Horse Racing Nation, please do so uh, here on YouTube, I should say. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again right here on Horse Center next week.